beautiful people, it's your girl Frankie here and today is a long awaited video about my studying tips for nursing school. So if you are a brand new nursing student or if you're a recurrent nursing student like myself, when you're bridging from LPN to RN, then this video is totally for you. Okay, so this is a no BS like study tip video okay this is not going to be your basic make sure you have your supplies make sure you go to the library to study no these are real life tips that i have learned that some teachers will not tell you if you got a real one they will probably tell you when they're lecturing but a lot of teachers don't really tell you the information i'm going to give you if you did the LPN program, then you are pretty familiar with NCLEX style questions. You are pretty familiar with kind of what to study and what not to study type of thing. You may have got the gist of it. But for my brand new nursing student babies, then this is all new to you, which was all new to me when I was in LPN school. And yeah, it was overwhelming. It was stressful. And if I knew these tips back then, then trust me, it would have been a very smooth ride. So I'm here to help you out because I don't want you to be stressed out and just, you know, going through it when I can make your life just a little bit easier with these study tips. Okay, so I don't really have a set number of study tips, but I did write them down in my notebook um, here. And, you know, I'm going to, you know, give it to you straight because I want you to get very high scores and do very well in nursing school because you know the struggle is real okay so before we go ahead and get started you know here on this channel i do have my nursing vlogs that i'm doing i also do natural hair care videos i also do diys and i have lifestyle videos so definitely take a moment scroll through my videos if you find videos that resonate with you then hopefully that will lead you to hit that subscribe button and become part of my team so i know i'm looking a little rough but we're going to go ahead and get started because i don't want to waste your time okay so my first tip that I'm going to give, which is something you probably didn't already heard, but you need to find out what type of learner you are. So I will put some links down below and you will just take a little quiz and it will basically like kind of tell you based on your answers what type of learner you are. If you feel like you know what type of learner you are, how has that been working for you? I'll wait. So if you reevaluate yourself and see that it's not working for you, then definitely take the quiz. But for my brand new nursing students that don't know, nursing school is a complete different ball game. It's not the same as a regular school. <laughs> All nursing students can vouch for that. It's not the same. So this is a whole nother level, okay? So yeah, so you need to figure out what type of learner you are, whether you like hands-on, whether you are an auditory learner, whether you have to write it out or do you need to read you know what i'm saying like you need to figure out what works best for you and of course according to the teacher and how they present the information you may have to tweak it a little bit um but i'm gonna give you all the the tea okay honey let me let me go ahead and break it down but so that is you know basically my number one tip that i give everyone is to find out what type of learning you are okay and of course the tips i give you is based off experience of myself of peers of just nursing students in general uh because i've been through it so i know and i'm going through it again for this rn so i just want to make it easy so my next tip which is something you would think i didn't turn off my page child it's something you would think that all students would get but me in LPN school I did not I was not good at this but get yourself a planner yes and I know you're like that's so basic but let me break it down to you how unbasic this planner is okay you want to get a planner if you can't find one that's going to stretch over you know the lifetime of your program that is great this is suits me well because I only have to do three semesters and this covers all of the months in the year that I need for my semester. Now, in LPN school, I did not, I had a planner, but I didn't use it 
for real for real okay i was winging it like my schedule i was winging it and it caused unnecessary stress so that's why i'm telling you guys get a planner and in the planner you know you want to put everything in your planner okay i'm not just talking about nursing classes um which i'm gonna show you guys an example but you know yes you want to write down the days you have school what you're going to be going over in class that day um you want to put any tests um you know the basic stuff for school now what you want to do on your planner also is put your work schedule if you work put your when you're going to study when you're going to go to lab when you have free time like I even want you to put your menstrual cycle on here like I am not I kid you not and I know that's like TMI but we're grown you want to put doctor's appointments you want to put anything that you have going on in your life you want to put in a planner and I say this because you want a snapshot of your week of your month when you are trying to plan and sort things out so just imagine if you have only school stuff in your planner and on your phone you have your work schedule you have doctor's appointments well you're bound to miss something you know when it comes to your free time and when you have time to do stuff so i recommend personally put everything in your planner so you have a snapshot oh i work these three days okay so i can't do nothing i had a doctor's appointment at that time so this is the time i can be able to go to lab this time i'll be able to study um this is what we're going over i only have two classes before we have a test on this on that subject that they're teaching so this helps you plan out like literally i'm telling you it will save you so much stress and time and what we're not going to do here on this channel is waste your time so um get yourself a planner now now that we got the kind of basic things out the way i am going to go ahead and get into the nitty gritty okay this is the stuff that teachers really don't tell you when they're lecturing but i'm going to tell you and if your teacher has told you you need to listen okay because they're not lying okay so when it comes to studying it's it's so much to try to read a whole chapter okay one the words are little you see this the words are little and the chapters are pretty freaking long and it's a lot of information it's, and if you're that type of person like oh and i get this a lot i even did it when i was a brand new nursing student oh my god i'm gonna read the whole chapter before i go to class and that's how i'm gonna remember stuff and just know stuff honey you're gonna get a real like wake up call if you really think that you're gonna be able to read that whole chapter and you're gonna retain all that information it it's just not going to happen I'm here to tell you before somebody else tell you or before your test tells you that it's not gonna happen okay I had one girl tell me she spent five and a half hours just reading one chapter that's a lot of time out of your day that you could have been doing something else okay so we're gonna study efficiently okay effectively here this is what you want to focus on let me tell you I'm gonna flip to it and then also I'm gonna put a little shot on the screen because I want you guys to see right now we are going over um fluids and electrolytes okay that's what we're studying right now this is what is important okay let me tell you this what's important can you see nurse management so what you want to focus on is nurse management when it comes because when you're taking your test a lot of the questions they pull for your test is over nurse management why because they want to make sure you're a safe nurse and you know what to do okay so that is i'm, I'm serious like focus on it. if you haven't thought about focusing on that i'm telling you right now focus on it nurses management now there will be a and p stuff and some teachers go over a and p some teachers skip over it i'm gonna be honest with you you're really no teachers are going to be asking you, you know a and p questions you've already had a and p in order to get into the nursing program so some of this stuff they feel like you should already know so a lot of teachers they skip over it and i'm telling you it don't waste your time spending hours reading over a and p all over again because you're not going to get answers over that the only subject i could really see them using maybe some a and p a little bit is cardio because the heart is so complex 
they may have a couple AMP questions in regards to where certain things are in the heart, but just straight out, they're not doing AMP. So I'm telling you right now, do not waste your time on AMP because a lot of teachers are not doing it. The nurses management is key. Okay, so I'm telling you right now, nurses management, write it down. When you go through your book, wherever it just says nurses management for whatever subject, you want to focus on that because it tells you as a nurse what you would do. You would get daily weights, um, input, output, the laboratory findings that you would see, um, what you would do with the respiratory, cardiac, skin care. And it all depends on what subject you're talking about, but nurses management is key. Another tip that I can give you besides focusing on your nurses management and I want you to comment like I want you to do that I want you to comment down below you know if it helped you if, I'm telling you they pull questions from that and how will I know because one of my teachers told us straight out look 95% of your questions are going to come from nurses management and ever since I learned that information and I've been studying nurses management my test telling you killing it okay so um, another thing that I want to focus on and give you a tip on is you need to know what does that look like okay what does that look like in my patient when my patient comes to me what is my patient going to look like okay if you can master that of all these because you know when you go through um, med search you know got all these signs and symptoms and you know it's very detailed if you can hone in on what does that look like, what will my patient look like, that will help you answer pretty much any question that they throw at you. Okay, if you haven't thought of that, I'm telling you, it works. It's 100 legit. Think about that. So when you're studying your nurse's management over your subjects, you also want to think while you're studying that, what does my patient look like when my patient comes to me? When my patient is presented to me, what does that look like? Okay, because if you're thinking they're just going to be like, I got some examples too, okay? So, my example is a fat emboli, okay? Pretty much like a blood clot, a huge blood clot, okay? Which can kill you, okay? Your patient can die, okay? So, if you think they're going to put a question out that's going to say, oh, your patient it comes in the ER presented with a fat emboli, what is the nurse's priority? Then you got it all screwed up, okay? And they're not gonna do that. What they're gonna do, let me give you an example. I wrote it down in my notebook, y'all. I came up with my own question. Yes, I didn't get this from nobody. I feel real proud of myself. But anyways, let's see. So, so your patient is presented to the ER with confusion and agitation. You have O2 stats at 78. You have your heart rate at 128. You have rapid breathing and purple and red spots on chest. What is the nurse's priority with this patient? A, give IV fluids. B, place in high Fowler's position. C, get, get vital signs. Or D, give oxygen. The answer is D. You want to give oxygen. Now, if you did not know the details of what your patient would look like with a fat emboli, then you would, as a nurse, probably pick get vital signs, you know, or you would get give IV fluids or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that is what I mean. Know what your patient looks like. So with a fat emboli, which they will go through in the nurse's management in your book. That's why I said it's so important to read this because it will tell you what you need to do as a nurse if the patient comes in with, you know, certain symptoms or whatever. So with a fat emboli, you can look at this all day. It's not a memorization game, guys. Okay. You need to know how to apply your knowledge. So you don't know what type of questions they're going to ask. You don't know how they're going to present the question to you. So that's why I say you need to know what does that look like for my patient. So with a fat emboli, the patient is going to present with tachypnea, which is rapid breathing, a low O2. They're going to have confusion, agitation, or anxiety. And they have petechiae which is a late sign, which is small red and purple spots, okay? So in that question, I literally described this 
to a T. But if you do not know that, you don't know what is the prevention for this. Careful immobilization, handling of long bone fractures. Treatment, ABC. You want to think ABC? You want to give oxygen first, okay? And then hydration. How do I know that? Because it's in the nurse's management. Y'all, it all ties together. So if you are looking at a question, you have to think, what does that look like? Like, what am I going to see? What is my patient going to look like? What is the, their stats going to be? What are their labs going to look like if I look at their labs? You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to dig a little deeper. You can't just go with face value. So the next tip is, should I do study groups or should I study alone? Now, I think a lot of nursing students kind of struggle with this. Um, a lot of people love to depend on other people and do study groups. And there's people like me that love to study alone. Why? Because I want to make sure that I fully understand it. And if I don't, I go to the teacher and ask them to see if I get an understanding. Now, study groups are not bad. I'm not going to say that. But I will say that with study groups, you have how many people in the study group and everybody kind of have their own opinion of how they interpret stuff and if you are strictly like dependent on doing study groups then you know the stuff you talk about in the study group you get to your test and you're like oh yeah well you know Sarah said it was this you know what I'm saying oh, I remember Sarah saying she remember it like this and then you get the question wrong because how Sarah make it make sense in her head you don't have the same brain so it may make you know it may be different in your head of your interpretation so that's why i say get an understanding for yourself and not depend on study groups when it comes to that also study groups to me when you're in study groups you know you tend to conversate and you start talking about you know test grades and tests and what questions you got wrong and then you get in the mode of comparing yourself to other students and you don't want to do that because that's going to distract you from actually studying for yourself because you'll get to study and like, oh man i really need to do good because so and so so and so over there you know they got a, a 92 on a test you know what i'm saying like they must be smarter than me i need to study hard i need to you know what i'm saying like you start thinking about that a little bit too much and it takes away from your focus so that is another tip so I say you need to learn to study alone if you are very dependent on study groups um, because when you get out there on the floor as a, a nurse you're not gonna have study groups to lean on if something's going wrong with your patient ain't nothing wrong with asking another nurse if you just want verification or something but you can't run to another nurse and other nurses every time something doesn't seem right with your patient you have to use your better judgment because it goes back to what does my patient look like and what could this be you know what i'm saying so study groups are okay but i would recommend studying alone to get an understanding and then you know if a study group happens naturally like if you all just happen to be at the library and then I ask a question and somebody answers the question and then somebody else join in and then it just turns into a study group that is fine but other than that study alone do nurses management and think what does my patient look like um the use of flashcards now flashcards can be good for some people flashcards can be bad for some people me i only use flashcards for short things okay so for like the fat emboli i will put back here what does my patient look like with a fat emboli in my own words because I want to remember it okay so you can write it verbatim from the book if you can remember that way or you could put it in a way that you can remember so when you see these things you know so I put the signs and symptoms I may see from my patient I put what can I do to prevent this from happening and then also the treatment and what is the number one priority with this patient I put it on there that's what I would put on here and then also I put my pharmacology so any medication I will put the medication name and then on the back I will put um, what the medication does and if it has any effects on my patient what what does my patient look like what would they have you know so acetaminophen Tylenol um, hepatotoxicity you know then I will put on here because it's just gonna say hepatotoxicity under acetaminophen it's not gonna break down what that is so you need to 
take it upon yourself to find out okay well what does my patient look like or what am I looking for with hepatotoxicity because they're not just going to say that on a test um, you need to put the antidote if there is an antidote to counteract the drug make sure you put that on there because they will ask questions about that also use the generics name you don't want to use the trade name because they do not do that on NCLEX or any test in school so if you're a brand new nurse then you may not know that I'm telling you now but if you are a veteran nurse or you're bridging over then um, you probably are already familiar with that so acetaminophen is Tylenol they're not gonna say Tylenol on your test they're gonna say acetaminophen if they use this drug or they might just do some signs and symptoms and ask you what drug are they on or something you know what I'm saying so I use it for things like that um, I know people that can write a lot of stuff on these cards me my attention span is is not that great to have like a whole little book on the back of my card I need my stuff to be short and to the point so when I look at it okay this is what my patient is gonna look like once we have talked about all of that, then we get to recording your lectures. I recommend that you record your less le ugh, can't talk. I recommend that you record your lectures and you actually listen to your lectures. You want to actually listen to your lectures and everything, okay? I know you're like, oh my god, I just sat through class. I don't want to listen to the lecture. I'm telling you, when you are studying or even when you're driving somewhere pop on that lecture and be listening to it as you're driving um, when you go to sleep you can listen to headphones you know what I'm saying like you want to get exposed to the information as much as possible um, if you've tried it and it does not quite work for you then that's probably just not the type of learner you are which goes back to the first tip find out what type of learner you are um, sometimes the teacher will say things in lecture that's not on your PowerPoint. They may mention it on the test, even though it's not on your PowerPoint. So that's why I say kind of listen to your lectures and go through that. Um, record your lectures whenever you can. It's easy. Your phone has a recorder. You pop it on. You sit it at the edge of your desk. If you can, sit closer to the front so it can pick up the teacher's voice. That's great. Um, and you want to record the lectures. Okay, so guys, that is it for my tips for right now. If you enjoyed my tips, let's do a recap. So you want to find out what type of learner you are. You want to get a planner and you want to write everything down in that mug. Um, you want to focus on your nurse's management because they want to know if you're a safe nurse and what you would do. And you want to focus on what does my patient look like. You know, off the signs and symptoms, you need to know what your patient is going to look like. Okay. Um, also, you want to do, um, you want to learn to study alone, but it's okay to occasionally do study groups, but just make sure you try to have a good understanding. If not, ask your teacher to see if you can get an understanding before you go to a peer, um, because the teacher is the one making up the questions, not your peers. So, I'm just saying, don't set yourself up. Go ahead and go to the teacher and ask questions if you do not understand, okay? And also record your lectures because that is so very important. And at LPN school, I did not listen to them lectures. I recorded them. I didn't listen to them. I'm telling you right now, go back and listen to them because sometimes the teacher will give hints. They will say stuff a lot of times. You're like, hold on. She didn't say it. She didn't mention this like 10 times during this lecture. That's probably important and it's probably something you should know. Okay. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely, if you want a part two or if you just enjoyed it, give me a big thumbs up. Um, also, comment down below if you are interested in more nursing tips. Um, as far as studying tips for nursing school, comment that down below. Honey, you could just put part two or you could put more tips, please. Just whatever down in the comment section and I will get another video out for you guys, okay? So I hope that was helpful. Please comment, share, like, and subscribe to my channel. And like always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.